Mr. XQ Cow Goblin himself. Guys, guys, is there a lot of toes or not? We are putting a complete siege on Gaza. No electricity, no food, no water, no gas, it's all closed. We're fighting animals and are acting accordingly. That was the Defense Minister of Israel responding to the deadly attack on October 7th by Hamas, a militant group based in Gaza. Guys, I'm sure that Hassan watched every single clip that's in this video, for sure. If the clip is in this video, Hassan watched it on stream 100%. There's no shy dent. Like, I, I, refuse, I refuse to believe that. You didn't watch the video, I'm sure you watched every clip in the video. Chat, chat, just, just give me the fucking, give me the timestamp for the US if it's like really bad, and I'll skip it. Hamas launched rockets, killed over 1,400 civilians, and kidnapped close to 200 people. Within days, Israel bombarded the Gaza Strip, killing several thousand, wiping out entire families, and striking ambulances, border crossing. So a lot of it, 15, 13, 15, 18. Oh, I mean, there was right there. Is there a bunch of it or not? 15, 28, what else? What else? Guys, this is in the video, bro. You guys are so fucking... ...and residential buildings. At the same time, Israel told over 1 million civilians to leave their homes and move south, warning them of an escalation of violence in the north. But Israel is bombarding the south too, leaving Palestinians trapped. For as long as this conflict has existed, movement in and out of the Gaza Strip has been to one degree or another restricted. The Prime Minister of the Israeli occupation, Benjamin Netanyahu, he knows very well that people are not able to leave. Guys, I'm just watching. The Gaza Strip is the smaller of the two to learn something, yo. territories occupied by Israel since 1967. This sliver of land, only 25 miles long and 7.5 miles wide, is home to over 2 million Palestinians, making it one of the most densely populated areas in the world. For the last 16 years, residents here have been living under a harsh blockade that allows Israel to control the flow of electricity, fuel, food, water, and medical supplies, so they can dictate when Palestinians receive essentials and when they're denied. That control is rooted in violence and destruction that goes back decades. Jesus. Before the establishment of Israel, Gaza was part of what became known as historic Palestine under Ottoman rule and later under British occupation. In 1947, as the British prepared to leave, they left the fate- Chat, guys, these are words that I am, I'm, I, it's hard for me, chat. Guys, an empire, an occupation, and then there's like, like, um, there's another state of that. There's like, uh, um, settler, settling, settlers. There's a bunch of words I don't know what they mean in, in, politically. Like, the, the political value of those words or the meaning behind it. You know? Like, um, like a, like a, occupation is a new buzzword. I don't know what it means though. It's, it's, it's not common sense. This is hard to understand. ...and later under British occupation. In 1947, as the British prepared to leave, they left the fate of Palestine up to a newly formed United Nations who voted to divide Palestine into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Soon, Zionist forces and militias began to forcibly expel hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from their land to establish the state of Israel. Many internally displaced Palestinians fled to this narrow stretch of land that would later become known as the God. So they decided to divide it in like, in like religious, like division. Gaza Strip. So these refugees became refugees because they were pushed out of their towns. I mean, is there other way to do it? Because whenever I hear, I, I, my brain automatically thinks, well, that's, that's like fucking 
That's like fucking throwing fuel and lighting up a match and throwing and be like, I wonder what's going to happen here, guys. What's going to happen here, guys? ...and villages. Some of them literally live a mile away from what used to be their towns and villages. Many others were forced to flee to neighboring Eight, Arab countries. 38, 46. Overwhelmed by refugees, these countries immediately declared a war against the new state of Israel to support... Whoa, 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 whoa. go back. What? The others were forced to live a mile away from what used to be their towns and villages. And village became... ...later become known as... ...the Palestinians fled to this narrow stretch of land that would later become known as... ...the Gaza Strip. Oh, okay. So these refugees became refugees because... They were pushed out of their towns and villages. Some of them literally live a mile away from what used to be their towns and villages. Many others were forced to flee to neighboring Arab countries. Overwhelmed by refugees, these countries immediately declared a war against the new state of Israel to support Palestinian Arabs. Uh, 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 they eventually see lost to Israel, but Jordan ended up occupying the West Bank and Egypt occupied Gaza City and nearby towns along these ceasefire lines. Then in wait, wait, 1967. Wait, 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 wait. They're occupying as in like they didn't they didn't agree what was going on. So try to help because they're getting a lot of refugees and they're like, yo, did this fix the problem? And then they occupy as in a, a military occupation or the yoink. Like a military occupation to be like, yo, let, let's help out, or more as they like uh we're owning this shit and they try to get it. Yeah, this is hard to understand, yo. What do you think? Well, that... Well... Then the video was contradictory then, then. These guys don't agree with what Israel is doing. And they're like, yo, let's help out. Because otherwise we're going to get a bunch of refugees from these people, right? So let's yoink the land. I'm confused. What the fuck is that? I guess I'm confused. I don't know how that works. It, occupying or what? The mean Arabs. They eventually lost to Israel, but Jordan ended up occupying the West Bank, and Egypt occupied Gaza City and nearby towns along these ceasefire lines. Then oh, in so that's not a real yoink. They're just occupying to help temporarily. 1967, another war broke out. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. Amid now. Palestinian resistance and fearing threats from neighboring Arab countries. Israel launched a full-scale attack on Jordan, Syria, and Egypt. In just six days, Israel captured the Gaza Strip and the Sinai from Egypt, the West Bank from Jordan, and the Golan Heights from Syria. This was the beginning of the Israeli Jesus, occupation uh, in Gaza bro, that continues 1v5, today. Man. Israel took control of all movement from and to the Gaza Strip by land, air, and sea. It placed troops along this line and inside the Gaza Strip, and allowed Palestinians to travel between the Gaza Strip, Israel, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem. But just a few months after the war, even though Palestinians now lived under Israeli control, they began to be referred to as non-citizens or foreign residents oh, in official nice Israeli documents. You inherit the status from your parents and grandparents, being stateless, unrecognized, with no rights, and, you know, this impacts your life. This was also when Israel started to build settlements for Jewish Israelis inside of Gaza. To Palestinians, this meant even more land being taken away from them. And they were being closed in. Israel did not allow Palestinians here to operate their own seaport or airport. Within the Gaza Strip, Israel developed key industries like agriculture to cater to Israeli and West Bank markets taking advantage of Gaza's cheap labor market and paying Palestinians very little. These economic challenges led to the rise of a prominent Islamic social charity, Mujama al-Islamiya. At the time, this charity, partially funded by Israel, built schools, mosques, clinics, and provided more food for Palestinians in Gaza. Guys, but I'm understanding. I'm understanding. Vox is usually biased, but I'm, I'm watching the video. We'll see how I have after. We'll see how I have after. simmered. Israel feared a growing resistance movement, and in response, soldiers often frisked, arrested, and detained residents. In 1987, that tension reached a breaking point after an Israeli truck crashed into a civilian car, killing four Palestinians. 
Palestinians immediately responded with protests, strikes, and boycotts against occupation. It would become known as the First Uprising, or Intifada. And that same year, Mujama al-Islamiyya transformed into a militant group, Hamas. Hamas was a group that came about during the first Palestinian uprising and was not really a part of institutional politics for some time. They weren't in charge of Gaza yet, but they wanted to liberate Palestinian territories from Israel's control and considered Israel an illegitimate state. After huh? the first year of the Intifada, during which over 140 Palestinians in Gaza were killed, Hamas and other militant groups began to attack Israelis more directly. Then, the Intifada grew more violent in 1991, which is also when Israel introduced a permit system that greatly restricted Gaza residents' ability to work, travel through Israel, or access the West Bank and East Jerusalem. By the end of the first Intifada, Israeli forces had killed over 1,000 Palestinians, and Palestinian militants had killed over 100 Israelis throughout Israel and the occupied territories. Is this accurate? The uprising ended after the internationally brokered Oslo Peace Accords between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization, or the PLO. This was a liberation movement with an armed wing that fought for Palestinian rights for decades. The PLO agreed to disarm and recognize Israel's right to exist, but Hamas, which had very little political support at the time, wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. What? Recognized Israel's right to exist, but Hamas. Guys, guys, I tr I try to, s to simplify these these things so my brain can understand it, okay? Okay? And see it like it's like a, you know, chat? The, the game Risk, right? With territories or whatever, right? If if Israel just did like a 1v5, right? I mean, nobody needs to, like, like green light their existence. They they are, they, like, they're, they're stronger in that sense. Right? So if anybody, if anybody were to take the fight, I mean, they, they would win, right? Because I'm, I guess I'm, try, I'm trying to make this as simple in my head. Like, if somebody has 40 troops here in the game, okay, and these guys have two, these guys have one, right? Well, I don't, I don't think they need any validation. Their, their strength is validation in, in, in the numbers. No? Us, which had very little political support at the time, strongly opposed it. The deal also created a new governing body, the Palestinian Authority, or PA, which allowed political parties and elections in the Gaza Strip. Confused. The PA was granted some autonomy within small areas, oh, it's symbolic, but yeah. Israel still controlled the territories and the flow through these crossings. The Oslo Agreement also promised Palestinians some level of autonomy and a path to statehood in five years. But that never happened. Instead, what followed was more Israeli settlements on Palestinian land. And a year later... I, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. Guys, I'm sorry, chat. Guys, I, my brain is too simple. Listen, these, this is so one-sided. Because if those hold the middle ground, and they're, not, they're never separated, they don't have to walk through anything. They can walk through themselves to go from one place to another, right? If this Israel spot is united, they want to go from here... To there, they can just go bam without crossing anything. Yet. The problem is that this Gaza spot is separated from the mainland, so which 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 by default makes it they have to cross. This is that's a fucking this. This is like a recipe for disaster. Who who thought about this plan? Who thought about this shit? Is it fucking young fucking you know what the fuck? Who thought about this shit, bro? What about they just stitch it? Fucking give them a spot and fucking and, and get out of that. Otherwise, you're it, it, it's a prison by default. Guys, otherwise it's a prison by default. Literally, there's no way. Am I crazy for this? I mean, shit. In five years. But that never happened. Instead, what followed was more Israeli settlements on Palestinian land. And a year later, following an attack by an Israeli settler in the West Bank, and a series of bombings by Palestinian militants, including Alaska is next to Canada. I understand it. They have to cross, to, but but there's an agreement between fucking uh, 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 between Canada and the United States that we're all, they're on good standings. It's different. 
if Alaska wants to drive to fucking Canada to go home, they're, they're allowed, yo. There's a big agreement. There's a North American trade agreement or some shit, right? This is under good standing, so there's going to be good faith. If, there, if there's tension in those areas, I'm sure that, like, the uh, the borders are going to be, like, fucking weird as shit, and everybody's going to be weird as, and people are going to do, like, dumb shit. They're not on good standings. Including Hamas, Israel's prime minister called for the construction of a fence around the Gaza Strip. Your passport, yeah. Gaza now had a physical barrier between it and the outside world. These moves made Palestinians trust the Israeli government and peace negotiations even less, and it would lead to a second uprising. On September 28th, 2000, Chat. Israeli politician Ariel Sharon. Oh shit, oh fuck, did I miss the, t the Taz? 838, 846. Oh well, I mean, GG. Um, Okay, chat, guys, 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 I'm trying not to be brain dead here, okay, chat, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think about a solution that's very simple because I have a, chi I have a child's mind. I'm, I, I'm very, I'm very entry level. What if they just agreed, let's say, the earliest plan, right? Make Egypt extend and now Gaza is Egypt, right? So anything they do against Gaza is against the whole country of Egypt and then, and then they, they fucking fight back, like, like a temperate, like an alliance, yo. They just say, fuck it, dude. Egypt, now Egypt owns this shit, cut. And it's like, yo, if they wanna go there, boom, right? Okay, I'm done, so forget it. Because, yeah. Because, guys, you know, child, when you play a little game, right? And it says, like, connect the, the, the blue dots without touching the outside, right? The only thing I can think about this, chat, is like this, think about this, think about this, think about this. Hold on, where's it at? Beautiful map. If this whole, if all these guys are chill, right? I guess they could go around it, right? They could go around it. Or they could go, they go bing, bong. The same way they did, they would go bing, bong, and they go there, right? So if these guys are chill with these guys over here, then they could be chill. All right, man, forget it. I'm, I'm over it. Just forget it. And Palestinian violent clashes accessible to Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Well, go back a little bit. 2000, Israeli politician Ariel Sharon visited Al-Aqsa Mosque, a Muslim holy site in Jerusalem that's largely inaccessible to Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. This visit sparked widespread protests and violent clashes, resulting in Israeli forces killing four Palestinian children the next day. And Palestinian militants carried out suicide bombings. Back in the Gaza Strip, Palestinians broke down much of this barrier. The Israeli government soon built it back up and heavily militarized it with more troops and observation posts. They further canceled travel and work permits, restricting movement through this crossing even more, and eventually destroyed Gaza's only major airport and its under construction seaport. By the end of the Second Intifada in 2005, Palestinian militants had killed I mean... over 900 Israelis and Israeli forces killed over 3,000 Palestinians. The Second Intifada gradually came to an end as Israel dismantled all Jewish-Israeli settlements in the Gaza Strip and withdrew the ground troops. Then, another internationally brokered agreement gave the PA control of this crossing with Egypt on the Gaza side and allowed trucks and convoys to flow between the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. But Israel didn't let that happen. This is tough. At the time of guys, the first legislation. Guys, this is really tough chat because they're oversimplifying it. Certain, in my opinion, it seems oversimplified like stats or whatever the fuck. Because listen, listen, chat. Listen. Listen. War and fights like that are complicated, okay? That's just my, my understanding of it, okay? Let's say you were to report fucking the, the Normandy thing, right? They're taking a fight on the fucking, they go on, 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 on the coast, right? How are the numbers gonna look like it? It looks like the people on the coast, like they, they're getting massacred. So if you can say, oh guys, uh, uh, these are, 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 boom. Well, I mean, you can contextualize that in a lot of ways, right? But the numbers are gonna tell another story, right? So it's very difficult to really get a grasp of how these things went when all I'm being given is just like, oh, bing, bong, bang. Like, it's, it's hard to get a grasp of it. You know? It, it's hard to get a grasp if I don't get the full story, man. I don't know how it happened. Of election after the second intifada, 
Fatah, a party backed by the PA and PLO that had negotiated with Israel. Because they're saying, saying, I understand it, that this zone sucks because it's, it, it's hard. If they were fighting against the border and they, get, they would bang, and, and, and the response to that, they put a bunch of troops on the fucking thing and they, and they, and they do the thing, right? Or well, of course, that's going to hide. I mean, um, th there's a logical conclusion here. So, so the video said it. They said that the, they said that the people inside were fighting against, they're fighting against the border, right? And it, it, it kind of broke it down a little bit and then they rebuilt it and they put a bunch of fucking military forces over, over there. Well, then, then now they have a logical conclusion of what's going to happen then. So then they're going to retaliate or whatever, no? It's, it's, I think it's logical. Israel was in power. But many Palestinians saw Fatah and it? its approach as ineffective. Hamas, which was now a political party in addition to being a militant group, won most of the seats in 2006. People voted for Hamas as a way to express their disapproval of the ongoing status quo, which was that the peace process had failed and they had had two uprisings and no state was in sight. In response to an armed militant party winning, Israel banned laborers from leaving Gaza for work. Then when militants captured an Israeli soldier, Israel carried out airstrikes in Gaza and tightened its control on the sea, limiting fishing capabilities to only six miles. Yeah, this is cooked as fuck. Politically yeah. within Gaza, Hamas had won the election. No, but the no, no, it's not trying to get down. It, unless it's biased, it's like, oh, you're being given bad conditions until a point where something happens and it's like, oh, well, something, this happened. Okay, say, say less then. We're going to do this. And you go 10 times as hard. It's like, oh, dude, like, do you mean the way I'm putting it, right? It's like squeezing a fucking, a, a fucking, a fucking, a little balloon, right? And then it severs and there's a leak of water. Oh, so you're going to spill water on my shirt? Okay, I'm gonna get the hose and spray fucking water in your face, bitch ass, because you deserve it. Uh, okay, well, Jesus Christ, well, I mean, it's kind of pretty, uh, this, this, this seems like there's like a logical, uh, again, there's like a logical uh, timeline here of expectations of what's gonna happen. PA was still the governing body with Fatah under its wing. A conflict broke out Unless between Hamas biased. and Fatah, and Hamas seized power of the entire strip in 2007. This is when Israel put Gaza under the official blockade that continues today, tightening Israel's grip over Gaza even more, trapping over 2 million Palestinians inside. This time, Israel closed the main crossing for commercial goods, made travel even more restrictive, banned exports from Gaza, and imposed restrictions on the import of essential items such as fuel, medicine, and food. They even used mathematical formulas to determine... Whoa. This is like an embargo from them to themselves, except by somebody else. That seems, uh, I mean, shit. Guys, guys, that, that, right? I mean, the necessary caloric intake for people in Gaza to control how much food they would allow in. Basically, we live a slow death in Gaza, even before major escalations. Uh, people cannot travel freely. We have Israeli drones hovering around 24-7. There's always stress. Over the next several years... Guys, the way that I, that I understand it, um, socioeconomic uh, interactions, okay, is that this, this zone will die on its own if it can't do commerce with themselves on the other end of it, right? And the outside world. They, they can't economically uh, 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 bloom to where they're dying over time by attrition and will be taken over in a certain amount of time. It's, it's, it's a ticking time bomb because if you can't do trade with yourself, with the other spot and the world where economically you're, you're dying. Like li you are literally dying. You're just waiting till people, till that generation dies and they will be weaker and they don't, there's no next one. Like it's like two generations and then, and then, and then it's back to zero. Next several years, reoccurring conflicts and airstrikes made the already devastating impacts of this blockade worse. Israeli airstrikes destroyed vital infrastructure, such as water and power plants. Repairs were delayed by the blockade, which impacted the delivery of construction materials. And for each militant attack on Israelis, Israel killed far more Palestinians in retaliation.
At times, Israel would slightly lift restrictions, but it was never close to the matching the humanitarian needs of Palestinians in Gaza. According to a UN report from 2022, this 16-year blockade had made 78% of the water in Gaza undrinkable, left 62% of Palestinians in Gaza in need of food assistance, living with rolling power cuts that last on average 11 hours per day. That is our normal life. We would have eight hours of electricity, 12 hours of electricity. It changes depending on the situation. And I had a comparison show, but I, I rewatched uh, Narcos recently, right? Something I noticed is that when Americans would send a DEA agent or whatever in the fucking, in, in uh, um, Colombia or whatever, right? And something were to happen to them, right? Even though it's one, one person, then it's like, Okay, this chat doesn't understand why I'm going with this, forget it. And the availability of fuel. Uh, we are completely dependent on Israel. This is what many Palestinians and international law calls collective punishment. Collective punishment is when cancer patients cannot travel because they get denied. And collective punishment means also that Palestinians cannot have their own hospitals and they cannot treat their, their patients. Collective punishment means the people of Gaza now are punished for the most recent escalation. When we look at the crime of genocide, which is, you know, the intentional destruction of a whole people in part or in whole, we are seeing elements of that crime being committed and carried out in the Gaza Strip right now. Okay, uh, uh, here's my last dumbass brain dead solution, okay? You occupy the borders by a third party. Get a bunch of countries and shit like that to send fucking other people, and then they occupy the fucking, uh, 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 the border, and then they regulate this shit. Guys, of course this is gonna be, of course it's gonna be a biased fucking border if they hold that shit, right? They, if they do stuff that they shouldn't be allowed on the border, they have somebody else hold it in it and make it unbiased. And then boom, boom, win. Have a third party hold the whole fucking squado on the border. Yo. The, the grand wall of fucking, of, of China, but not in China. There's equating. Uh, Held by non-Chinese. Hamas and all Palestinians. And this is not the first time that we're going to see people in Gaza and civilians in Gaza, half of whom are children, pay the price for Hamas or anything else. Israeli and U.S. leaders have emphasized that Israel has the right to defend itself by wiping out Hamas completely. But the majority of casualties in the Gaza Strip aren't Hamas fighters, they're civilians. It's an interesting question to consider whether or not things would have been different if Hamas didn't exist. But the thing is, Hamas didn't exist until the late 80s, but the occupation of the Palestinian territories has been since 1967. And the original Palestinian displacement was 1948. And Hamas didn't really emerge until much later than that. I think that anybody who follows Israeli and Palestinian politics, like with some level of honesty, uh, it knew. Guys, I'm trying to be unbiased. Again, I feel like even though I understand the problems and what's going on, I still feel there's, there's an over oversimplification of some of the things being done down to a couple of words. Uh, guys, some of these interactions could take a two hour video to understand it. It's being said as like, yep, somebody died. Like, guys, this isn't as simple as it is. I'm sorry to say it. You guys can show customer question marks as you want to. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I understand the topic at hand. I understand what, what's going on now, a bit more, okay? I still feel like I'm not being given enough context for some of these fucking interactions. Because um, when it comes down to fucking things like, like war and conflicts, it's, it's so complex. That if what happened hadn't happened, something else was going to happen because the status quo was unsustainable. The world has to recognize this suffering even before we have escalations. The reason we have escalations is because people cannot find any hope. No one wanted to get to this point. The tragedy of it all, in my mind, I think besides the loss of human life, is that it was preventable, easily preventable. Easily? Guys, 
I do feel like sometimes some some problems um, in themselves, it's it's a losing problem, which is really sad. I feel like this is like a losing problem. It's so complicated, and the way it looks, like dude, guys, when you look at the, at the at the at this when you simplify it, right? If your if your spot is is severed into two, and the one holds the middle, and they're stronger, dude. The solution is going to be incredibly complicated, dude. They hold the middle ground and they're stronger and their gears are split in half. It's, it's a hard, I, I don't think some guy says, oh yeah, it's going to be really simple. I don't, I don't think it's simple. The fuck? Um, it's not complicated. Okay, let's fix it. Because I, I, had, I, had, I had a bunch of fucking solution. I had Landia. I had the wall of China. Okay. Nothing is I simple ha I, about war. I, ha I had land teleportation uh, or stitching, stitched aside. I have a bunch of solutions. I've, I've got, I've brought three. How much have you had? I've had three already. La Landia is, um, you mix the whole thing. You, um, you, you, you stop at the names and the whatever, and you make the what holding CS2 the one, cases would you and you call it Landia, because it's land, it's like China. Landia. It's so one spot for the whole for everybody. Back the kids Nobody mad. You. Nobody mad. Hi. Oh. Thoughts? Otherwise, um, Wall of China, not in China. You put a, you put a, 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 a big spot in the middle, occupied by a third party that Three that verify that that the, the, that the borders help, are well uh, are being well uh, uh, conservated by a third party. Oh, right. Um, Mr. or once a little bit harder, that's what was the kind of fantasy. You stitch this entire spot to the corner here. So they get, they, they give them land, they give them all of that, XQCL. right? I, I, and, and then they take the, the, the strip, they want the strip, they could have it, and then you, you just put this, take the side, take, 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 a, take a piece of land, yo. Or, or, or this, this part. controversial video, then times out anyone supporting Israel, but not people spamming Palestine support. Didn't know I was watching Hassan Lamau. Fix your mod spud. Huh. No one asked go next. XQCL. Yo. Yo, why do I expect the mods to like fucking know everything and do it? Bro. It's insane how based any take my streamer makes is. Well, yep. me now just based. Wait, yep. really? Still. Yep. Still. Yo, yo, am I based yep. at though? No. Still. Yeah, I'm based yep. at China, I'm based at it. No, I, that's basic. No? Okay. 